and welcome to another edition of Veterans Forum. My name is Rebecca Jennings and the Veterans Agent for the Town of Plainville in North Attleboro. Today we have a special guest, uh, three guests actually, matter of fact, that are coming on to talk about their new nonprofit that they have started uh, and what some great things that they're looking to do. Welcome, boys. Welcome. So we have Cass Salimi, yep. uh, Paul Follett, and yep. Carrie Gilbert. And um, so you guys are from Friends of North Attleboro Veterans. So you're a recently new uh, nonprofit that has started off in, here in North Attleboro. Before we start talking about the organization, I would love our viewers to learn a little bit about your military history and what your connection with uh, veterans is and why you decided to you know, ultimately start this nonprofit. Cass, you want to lead us off? Yes. Uh, well, I was from the U.S. Army. I drafted in 1943 and I discharged in 1946, so I spent three years in the Army. Doing Army. what? Uh, I was a communications sergeant in the artillery, and uh, I guess after I was discharged, got married and so forth, and then when my wife passed away, I joined the DAV in, in Norwood, and I'm still with them. So, and then I began to see those that needed help, and we used to visit at the Brockton and, and uh, and Providence Hospital, we'd visit veterans there that were injured. So that's how I became interested in helping those that needed help. Yeah. So how long have you lived here in North Attleboro? I moved up here in 1972. So oh, you're in Attleboro? Uh, in, in North Attleboro, yeah. In North Attleboro, since 1990. In 1990. So you've been around. So have you seen the different things that our, our community does for our veterans, so you're very yes, aware of that. Yes, actually, I think I was involved in the beginning of many of the things for veterans here. Which is great that yeah. you're stepping forward to, to start, to bring it to the next step. Yeah, and it's, so, it's great. Good. Uh, my name is Kerry Gilbert. I'm retired Navy. I spent my time aboard a radar picket ship, the ER-329. Uh, I enjoyed every moment of it, and I'd do it again. Uh, and when I met up originally with these folks, uh, we put our heads together, and I believe you were in the middle of it as well, to start a 501C19. Uh, 501C19 is strictly for veterans and strictly a nonprofit for veterans. And now, you've been working with the veteran community for a while, though. Um, yeah, on the periphery of it, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm so many things going on I try to pay attention to specific things and I got very interested in it working with you on the advisory board. Uh, now for folks in our audience that don't know what the Veterans Advisory Board is, that's a board that consists of members in the community that are veterans or, uh, or just regular <laughs> folks that want to be involved with veterans. Um, and the events that are held in their community. Um, and so we meet once a, m a month and we talk about different events and things that we can outreach to veterans. And uh, these folks are on the advisory board. Uh, and from that, we, we put this together uh, to assist you helping other veterans. Uh, you can't receive a lot of money directly because you're a town department and it's a convoluted way to get the money to you. So by doing this, people can donate to the Friends of North Attleboro Veterans, and they, we will then direct that money to whatever needs you see fit. Uh, and so far, we've done pretty well. The treasurer sits here and tells me he just bought a home somewhere in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> All right, Treasurer, tell us a little bit about your military history and how you got involved with working with that. So uh, I understand that you're part of the American Legion here in town. Right. Uh, I was in the Air Force, spent uh, a couple of years in Strategic Air Command on fuel and tankers. Then I went to Alaska and flew a three-star general around. Uh, Militaries in, in my family. My, my father had too many kids in World War II to oh, wow. 
to, to get uh, drafted, but uh, both my brothers, who are now deceased, have one was in the Army, one was in the Air Force. So and a long history of military in, the, in, in the family. In the family, yes. Awesome. Yes, I have a son that's a Marine, or I call it still a Marine. Like Marines are always Marines. They are. <laughs> and I had two brother-in-laws, Marines. <laughs> so uh, military's in the family. And, uh, now your young, wife's in the, uh, was in the military too, right? Yes, she was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we... Uh, I was commander of the local American Legion post for seven years. I was district commander of all Bristol County in the, of the American Legion post, that, which was, I think there was 24 when I was commander. Uh, I did that twice, so I've been, I started doing military stuff ever since I've been out. Yep, so that's awesome. Mm. So that's what made you get into working with the military population, the veteran right. population is your, your, I'm assuming for you two, too, is the association with your time in history, history in the military that yes. you wanted to kind of give back to our local veterans. Exactly, yes. exactly. Right. That's what we're here for. Uh, I think visiting some of the, some of the, uh, the wounded veterans that I met at, at Brockton Hospital were, were really eye-opening and uh, I had I felt I really had to help and that's where we got heavily involved through the DAV at that time. And uh, for folks in the audience that don't know what DAV stands for, what does it stand it's for? Disabled American Veterans. Thank you. Some of our, our our folks in our audience they uh, they didn't serve in the military or have an affiliation with the military. So when we use acronym to kind of go right over their head. Right. <laughs> I don't mm. think any of us as veterans would not help. Right. I think that's that's kind of pounded into you in boot camp. You're part of a big organization, and you never get out of it. No. We're right. here. You're a team. We're a team. Yeah. Even though he's Air Force, I suppose, and, and he was <laughs> Army, uh, that's okay, too. <laughs> and you were Army, but, you know, between the Navy and Marine so Corps. So it's a Karam, uh, the, the, the time that you spend in the military, you really have that brotherhood, sisterhood uh, relationship with people that served in the military, and that uh, you want to give back, and that's why you've been involved in the organizations you've been involved with, and this organization you're getting ready to that you have started is that you want to give back to these veterans uh, that have done so much for our country. Exactly. Right. It's a, uh, we're still getting our feet under us. Uh, we do, we do look forward to making some, uh, so we'll jump right, we'll, we'll, we will jump okay. right into this. Um, okay. So. All right, so tell me, what, what is your mission statement for your, your organization, for the nonprofit? Uh, what are you hoping to provide uh, to these veterans in our community? Uh, our mission statement is pretty short and sweet, veterans helping veterans. Mm -hmm. that, that's it in a nutshell. Yep. We, we could sit and have pages of information, you know, that we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We, we opted to go short and sweet. Uh, we're here to help you uh, because you can identify the veterans uh, that need help, that is, there's an anonymity for them. Uh, HIPAA rules, I guess, apply. Mm -hmm. But you will know the people that need help financially for whatever reason. It's your call as the boss uh, to tell us what you need and it's up to us to go out and fundraise uh, and I love begging for money it's always a lot of fun but <laughs> it's for a good reason so because you're you're ultimately you, you're taking care of the veterans in your community yes and I think there's so many different organizations that I'm sure a lot of folks that are in the audience right now um, they get flooded with phone calls and emails and uh, and pamphlets that are sent to them on a daily basis uh, about these all these different veteran organizations 
that are out there looking for financial funds and that's the first thing that they come into my office and they said you know where should I donate I want to help our local veterans I want to help our veterans instead of throwing money at an organization that you may have seen on TV um, that send you hats that send you coffee cups or you know but you're not actively seeing where this money is going Right. But within keeping the, the your donations within the community, you can see it. You can help make a huge impact on these uh, veterans that are in their community. Um, and some of the things that um, our veterans um, are covered through for Chapter 115, uh, which is Mass General Law Chapter 115 for low-income veterans, you know, we do help them with prescription costs and and uh, health insurance and fuel assistance and things like that. But there's other things that come up that, like they own, a, they have a pet and they can't take their pet to the veterinarian because they don't have the money because literally they're trying to decide whether they're paying for prescriptions or food uh, for some of these older vets, um, you know, to register their vehicle. Um, sometimes that can be very difficult. That's, um, that's, that's very true. And mm -hmm. I think um, the fact that in some cases you can't help uh, beyond a certain point and yes. you can refer them to us and we can probably pick right. up the slack. And that's what we're getting at is there is a gap between the services that are provided through our office and the services that you guys can pick up on the other side of the coin is you're you're basically trying to fill in all the holes. We fill so in again. Right. Fill in yeah. everything so that you did a whole loop around around these veterans mm -hmm. and the, uh, and taking care of them. We're here to help and if we have to put a roof on a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the other yeah. thing is yeah. you know we often get phone calls regarding you know veterans that had diabetes and you know for some reason they end up losing their leg or the part of their foot and you know the diabetes are a direct result of exposure to Agent Orange or you know chemicals in the military um, and here they are like disabled to a point that they can't work or whatever and they don't have the financial funds to put that ramp on and to be able to, that's not something that my office could certainly take care of, but it's certain something that your nonprofit could that's step what, in right. to that's be able what we to help do. in. And right. we look to the community. We're not going to beat them to death looking for money. Uh, we will be out at certain places during the season to ask for money, but we'll do it nicely. Mm -hmm. We have we have one goal and that is to help you help your veterans or our veterans. Our veterans, absolutely. I think one thing that people have to understand is whenever we have a fundraiser, all that money stays in it North Attleboro. It's this no nobody gets paid nothing. No. It's they're... just everything we do is charity with with we've kicked money out of our own pockets to get this started and We'll continue to we'll do it. We'll continue to do it, exactly. It's now, you guys are planning some outreach events uh, coming up and you're, as you're rolling on, because you guys just started, um, you're looking to do more outreach events. So you have an outreach event that's coming up in the fall. Do you guys want to talk about that, the barbecue? Oh, that's been put on hold for a moment. Oh, um, it's been... And let me explain that, because we're still going to do it. Uh, I was raised, I think probably both of you were raised the same way. If you don't have the money to pay for it, then you don't do it until you've got the money. Right. Uh, for us, this would be an expensive proposition to put this on, but it would be a, an incredible fundraiser in the end. Uh, and we're kind of gathering up our nickels and dimes to, to be able to pay for it completely up front and then whatever we bring in is going to be the gravy on the pro the program. Uh, we probably wait. I don't know. We haven't had a specific meeting about this, but we'll probably wait till either spring or sometime next, early next summer to do it. Okay. But we've got other things that we're going to do. Uh, there's a strawberry festival or something coming yeah. up. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and that's gonna, next weekend. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's next weekend. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I haven't been in on that planning as, as 
uh, as much as uh, Jackie has. Um, we have the Christmas party, which we mm -hmm. work with you on very closely. Uh, that is for veterans only. Uh, this year we've moved to the Elks, where we're going to have it. Uh, December 5th, if I don't right, I remember right. correctly. I believe that's the date. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're going to do is anyone else that comes will have a, a small donation, not a, a ticket or anything, but they can make a small donation to come in because if I bring my wife, there's no reason she should eat on our dime. Mm -hmm. She understands that. She said she'd be happy mm. to kick in. Yes. So mm. uh, we'll, we'll be doing that. that yeah. That's carved in stone. Uh, otherwise, we're still, like I said earlier, we're still getting our feet under us yeah. uh, and trying to plan things out. Right now we're missing one guy because he had a knee operation. And, uh, it, it's just, it's amazing. So but the biggest thing you are looking for is the funds to start this program rolling. Yeah, um, right. that's So big. how can people donate to this nonprofit? Uh, we, we have a, people can send money to the Friends of North Alabama Veterans it's Post Office Box 372, North Alabama, Mass, 02761. And uh, I check the mailbox at least once a week. And uh, we'll any, grab any small we'll, donation, five dollars, anything. Any donation will, will help. It will all help. it all adds up. Or if they really want to save a dime, they can drop a large check on your desk, and I'm sure you'll get it to us. Absolutely, they can certainly do that. They can, yeah. you know, drop it off at uh, the best friend's office too, and we we get that out to you guys. We've had nickels and dimes come in from people that we have no idea who, how they heard of us, mm. but. And, and he well, was, after this show, they're going to hear of you. Well, <laughs> we hope so. Uh, we, we fondly refer to ourselves as FNAV, <laughs> Friends of North Attleboro Veterans. Uh, that's a lot, of, lot to say for an old guy. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to get there, and we're going to give our veterans right. exactly what they need and a little bit more. Absolutely. There's one way, yes. there was another way to fundraising. I, my daughter put me on to today. She said, uh, "You're going to have a birthday coming up." She says, "And we, you don't need Christmas. You don't need presents." She says, "Why don't you have a fundraiser?" She said, "Wow, ask people to donate if you, rather than uh, bring presents." And how so old are you going to be, Cass? <sighs> Ninety-six and ninety-six June years 14. old, and still involved with the community. Yes. Bless you. Yes, that's, that's pretty amazing. amazing. That's absolutely yeah, that's amazing. I'm not going to live that long, but <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's what my doctor says. <laughs> now you guys are you guys are getting onto social media. Um, tell us a little bit about your social media avenues. We have a Facebook page, uh, and for the life of me, I can't get the thing straight. Do either of you remember? No, it? I haven't. No. I've got it bookmarked, so I don't need to. Yeah. But if they go stupid. if they go into Friends of North Attleboro, the sure. search bar, they should be they able, should to, be find, able to, find to find to find the nonprofit yeah. and like you on Facebook. Yeah, right. uh, we we have I believe we have a Twitter account, but none of us are really that familiar with it at this point. Someone's going to have to do it. I Cass, don't do you're Twitter. <laughs> I, don't do Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I have enough time with yeah. <laughs> with Facebook. Mm. Uh, you know, this will all be. We'll bring you some more information, more exact information as we go along. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we we all we went out. We had cards made so each one of us can go into the community. And here's my card. It's got our personal uh, email on it and our personal phones. So you will be doing but the outreach, such as the stop and shop. The we will be doing and, that and at, things at like that, point. and ask right. folks uh, to be able to donate. So if they see yeah. them at your local stop and shop, they know uh, what your organization does, we, and we're, a little bit more educated. We're uh, in the process, I believe, of getting shirts and hats, which will give us a little bit of reality for people to see. Um, it's it's a slow process. Right getting where we want to go. But we have jars up at 
town, town hall, the town clerk's town office. Town clerk's office. So they and can go into the town's clerk office. Definitely. Definitely. And there's a one. G.I. Joe. There's one in G.I. Joe's. Yeah. And uh, the beauty shop, what's it, 249 or 349? I'm not sure. Down at, at uh, on. North Washington Street at uh, by Fisher Street. I can't even think of well, the Well, the two ones that we know for sure, they can, the town's yeah. clerk or the GI Joe. Joe. Your viewers mm -hmm. will have to excuse us. We have these senior moments once in a while. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sure they understand. <laughs> uh, we'd like to get more of those out into the community, but. If, there, if, if there's a local business, that wants to that's watching now and they want to put up a can in their in their business they can contact my my office and mm -hmm. then in turn you guys can get a can in there exactly. and that'll be able to help yep. um, raising right. raising some money right. too and like you said uh, e even if it's a dollar five dollars whatever it'll help you achieve your goal uh, of reaching to uh, to raise money uh, to ultimately help our veterans that's in right. the community. Right. Anybody out there, if you can't get hold of us, you can get hold of our boss over here. And Rebecca can reach us really quick if you need us. <laughs> now, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you guys wanted to highlight? Um, Europe, Kaz, will go around oh, the room. Well, <laughs> well we got the uh, July 4th picnic coming up. We do have yeah. the July 4th picnic. Picnic, which is uh, for so veterans. Every year, in the la for the last three years, this will be our third annual uh, July 4th picnic. Uh, it is open to any veteran and their family members. Um, we have opened it up to not only North Attleboro and Plainville, but we've opened it up to other communities um, to, to be able to have veterans celebrate the 4th of July and to celebrate it with other veterans. And we have it on July 4th at the Hockamock YMCA, and it's from 10 to 2. And during that time, we are going to have free hot dogs, hamburgers, sides, uh, and we'll have a swimming pool and some games open. We also have a DJ uh, so people can be able to, um, you know, listen to music. Sure. And I'm sure you're able to see these folks here, too. <laughs> We're sure. always someplace around. Yes. <laughs> We're not far out. And this is a great event. This is uh, the first year really we had 40, 40 people show up. Last year we had 110. Um, so I'm hoping that next year, I mean, this coming th year, we are going to have even more. I would love to be able to hit 200 veterans and their families. And it's just a great time to be able to meet yeah. other veterans in your community and uh, you know, see what it's all about. Maybe get involved with some of these right. uh, these organizations that are in your community to be able to give back. We have a lot of good organizations besides us. We've got the DAV. Uh, we've got the Legion. VFW. You know, the VFW. VFW. Yeah, VFW. Uh, they're all they're all there for the veteran community. Uh, we're Johnny Come Lately, and we're here to raise money a little bit more openly than they do, uh, but anybody that's watching, give us some help, please. Mm. A little bit. A little bit. Every mm -hmm. little bit counts. Every right. little bit counts, right. yes. So, well, I want to thank you guys for coming on the show today. I appreciate all your time uh, today and sharing the information about the uh, you, know, you nonprofit and you know what your goals are and where you're heading to and uh, also talking about the 4th of July picnic that's happening on 4th of July at the Hockamock YMCA um, from 10 till 2. When and was that? When was that? 4th of July. 4th of July. <laughs> 10 to 2. 10 to 2. 10 to 2. And we've got a pool, we've got food, we've got games, and we've got the brotherhood and sisterhood all together. For right. 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 Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, look forward to uh, the future Veterans Forum show. We'll, we'll bring on some guests and talk to them about what they offer to our local veterans and their community.